What's good, YouTubers and YouTubettes? This is JB Sports back again with another one. Gonna talk about the heavyweight championship fight this Saturday night at MGM Grand on the Strip in Las Vegas, Nevada, as Deontay the Bronze Bomber Wilder looks to defend his WBC heavyweight championship in a rematch against Luis Ortiz. I think this matchup is going to be epic and intriguing as we, as the first fight was uh, the fight of the year candidate in uh, 2016, and it was a great fight, and it was, that was the fight that uh, took Deontay Wilder's career to that next level as he's able to defeat the undefeated Southpaw Cuban in a in an epic battle when he was able to knock him out in the 10th round after surviving a scare in the 7th round when he was almost uh, taken out in that 7th round. It was a great, great fight. Uh, Ortiz uh, was able to uh, get Wilder to kind of fight on his back foot early on in that fight as he was able to back him up with the jab and he was able to uh, make Wilder fall off the back foot. Wilder uh, slowly worked his way into that fight and he was able to set up his money punch and he was able to uh, knock down Ortiz. I think it was in the fifth round of the first fight and uh, he had him in trouble. I think it was the fourth or the fifth round. He was able to knock him down and uh, he was doing good up to the seventh round and, and uh, Ortiz was able to turn the tide as he hit him with his money punch the straight left hand. Wilder tried to bluff bluff it and make it like he wasn't hurt but uh ortiz being the veteran boxer that he is was able to see through the smoke screen was able to jump on wilder and landed a flurry of punches maybe i think around like 17 unanswered punches wilder was able to kind of grab and hold him off and was able to buy himself a little time and was able to weather the storm and he was able to uh come back in that 10th round when i thought he was actually uh getting dominated Many people talk about the seventh round, but after the seventh round, uh, Ortiz did a good job of controlling the action, eighth and ninth round, and he looked like he was on his way. I had him ahead, actually, in that fight going into that tenth round, but Wilder was able to get the knockout as Ortiz kind of faded, you know, got tired, fatigue set in, and Wilder was able to uh, catch him with his uh, power punch and was able to stop him in the tenth round. I think this uh, rematch is going to come out a little bit different. I think, and I'm not saying the outcome will be different. I'm saying how the fight plays out compared to the first fight. I think uh, both fights going to come out a little bit more tactical in this fight. Being in the ring with each other and being familiar with each other, I think both guys are going to be looking to take away the other guy's strength. The, what the other guy had success in the first fight, the, uh, the other fighter is going to be looking to try to negate that in the rematch. What I mean by that is um, Ortiz know the right hand is um, – Wilder's uh, money punch, the most devastating right hand in the history of boxing. And I think uh, what Ortiz is going to be trying to do is he's going to be trying to stay on his feet. And I think he's going to be trying to circle to his left to try to take away uh, Wilder's right hand. Now, that's going to take – that could uh, set up – actually set up uh, Wilder's left hook. Wilder's left hook is very underrated. As you know, he dropped uh, Tyson Fury in that 12th round with the left hook. That what should have been uh, – a fight that should have probably been waved off. As he hit him with that left, left hook, and as Fury was going down, he hit him with a right hand for good measure. But the left hook was the one that started all the trouble for uh, Fury in that 12th round. So he'll be looking to set that up in the um, early in the fight. So I think if it is a, a knockout, an early knockout by Wilder, I think it's going to be with the left hook, not the right hand like everybody probably anticipated. Uh, what uh, Ortiz is going to have to do is uh, he's going to have to look to set up his left hand People talk about Wilder's right hand, but Ortiz's left hand ain't no joke either. He catches with that left hand. He can knock anybody out in the heavyweight division with that uh, straight left. But Wilder's going to do what uh, Ortiz's going to – Ortiz trying to do with take away the right hand. Wilder's going to try to take away his uh, straight left, and he's going to circle to his right. And uh, I think he's going to circle to his right to take away uh, Ortiz's uh, – left hand and i think wilder what he's gonna do is at sometimes he's gonna try to set a trap with ortiz i think he's gonna try to stand his ground invite ortiz to throw the left hand and he's gonna try to go over the top with the right hand and with wilder he don't need full extension with that right hand he just needs to he just needs to connect with that right hand he can do a lot of damage and knock you out even without full extension that's how powerful his right hand is so ortiz is just he's he, he's in he's in tough because he's he, as good as he is he's a very good boxer very technical very skilled and he's got good uh, footwork for a big man, too, as he does that little Ali shuffle as he moves around the ring, shoots that little jab out. He kind of uh, does that. Uh, I haven't seen too many fighters do that since Muhammad Ali, the great Muhammad Ali did that. I think uh, who I seen do that. Greg Page did a little bit of that, but he was a bad impersonation. I think, uh, Vic, I mean, Luis Ortiz has probably done the best 
Muhammad Ali impersonation as uh, dancing around the ring, shooting that jab out, man. He did that a little bit in the first Wilder fight. He's going to be looking to do that again as he's going to be trying to be light on his feet. And he's going to try to show that he's the more skillful fighter in the ring with Wilder uh, Saturday night. But the problem is, I think as the fight goes on, you know, you get a little bit more tired. You get a little bit more of a fatigue. And, I, you know, you get a little bit more susceptible to getting hit. And I think that's going to be a downfall, man. I think Wilder's going to be able to catch up to him somewhere in the middle part of the fight, maybe around out this round seven. And I think um, uh, Ortiz is going to be trying to look for that right hand. And I think uh, Wilder's going to be able to catch him with that left hook and put him out and uh, get a seventh round uh, knockout over uh, Luis Ortiz. But before that takes place, I think it's going to be a very competitive fight. Wouldn't be a bit surprised to see um, Luis Ortiz ahead on the scorecards because I think he's the – He's actually got a little bit more skills than uh, Deontay Wilder. I think Deontay Wilder is the harder puncher, but Deontay Wilder is very unorthodox, very unorthodox. He throws punches from uh, different angles, and he's got very long arms. When you think you're out of range, you're really not out of range. You know, you fight other fighters with uh, – I think uh, Wilder has made what, what do you call it, like an 81-inch uh, reach advantage. So when you think you're out of range, and a guy like Ortiz does, does do a good job of fighting at it, fighting from a distance – and using that jab to control distance, control range. But against Wilder, you need to be a little bit further out of range than you uh than you think you should be. You think you're out of range, but you really ain't out of range because you're not fighting a regular heavyweight. You're fighting a, a, a freak of nature, a freak athlete in Deontay Wilder. He's got very long reach. So you you need to be almost if, – if he in the middle of the ring, you damn near got to be up against the ropes to be out of his range. Let's put it like that because even if you from a distance, he, he does that little stutter step. And he, he gets that leverage, and when he comes from that awkward angle, he can still catch you with that straight right hand when you think you're out of range. He's knocked a lot of opponents out like that. But uh, I think the key uh, for uh, Wilder, like I said, would be the left hook. Wilder would have to do a little bit uh, jab to the body to kind of at least get Ortiz to think about bringing his guard down slightly. He ain't got to bring the guard all the way down, all the way down from the body body uh, from the left jab to the body. But he just got to kind of make him bring it down, just make him – Faint, hit him to hit him to the body, and then faint like you're gonna go to the body just to kind of bring that guard that guard down just a little bit, and then you go over the top with the right hand and this good night, Irene. That's what Wilder's gonna be looking to do with uh Ortiz. Ortiz is gonna be looking to uh, throw that um that right jab. And the one good thing about uh Ortiz jab is he he uses his jab as a as a real good point scoring jab, but then does, another thing he does with the jab is he blinds you with that jab. He shoots that jab like right in your eye to, just to get you, just to blind you for a, a split second, and then he comes with that left hand, which you never see, and that's what uh, puts, puts uh, a lot of his opponents out as he was able to uh, knock out the um, the Latino fighter, uh, Ojaba, whatever his name is, on the undercard of the um, Mikey Garcia-Robert Easter Jr. fight. He was able to blind him with the... Um, with the right jab, and he they was able to come with the straight left, and it was good night, Irene. And that's what he's going to be looking to do with Wilder. He's going to be looking to just kind of mesmerize him or kind of blind him for that split second with the jab, and then he's going to try to come with the straight left, and that's going to be the punch he thinks he can uh, knock Wilder out. He said in the press conference that his fight will not go the distance. This is what Luis Ortiz said this. He said either he's going to knock Wilder out or Wilder's going to knock him out. And I agree with Ortiz. I don't think this fight is going the distance, but I think Wilder knocks him out in the seventh round with the left hook. And I think that's going to be the punch he can get him out of there. Either the left hook or the jab to the body, which is going to bring Ortiz guard down slightly and then come over the top with the right hand and get Ortiz out of there. It'll be one of those two ways I think Wilder gets the knockout. If Ortiz is going to get a knockout, I think it's going to be with the money punch. Like I said, with the jab, the kind of mesmerize a blind Wilder with the uh, right jab and then come comes with the straight left with a uh, with the straight left and uh, catch Wilder uh, flush on the chin and knocks Wilder out. So I think that's gonna be the game plan for both fighters. I think um, Ortiz is gonna be moving around a little bit more in this fight. Like I said, you'll see him be doing the Ali uh, the Ali uh, dancing around the ring where he kind of dances and dances and moves around the ring, shoots out the jab, moves around the ring, light on his feet. You'll see him do do that maybe for a round. To uh, give Wilder a different look, but I think ultimately uh, Wilder's uh, left hook, which is underrated, was gonna be the difference in this fight. He just got power in both hands, not just the right hand like everybody like to talk about. It. That left hook is just as deadly, and I think that'll be the downfall for Luis King Kong Ortiz. I got Deontay Wilder, 
A knockout in the seventh round over Luis, Luis King Kong Ortiz to retain his WBC heavyweight championship and set up a showdown in another rematch against Tyson Fury on February 22nd of 2020. This is JB Sports, the man, the myth, the legend. I holla.